Hey everyone, uh, I'm Russ Wernstein, I'm a chiropractor and neurologist, and I'm going to explain to you uh, what it is that happens when you have a whiplash or other sort of spinal trauma. So there's several things that can happen, but primarily the thing we're going to be looking at are the long-term consequences of that trauma and primarily uh, the effect it's had on the muscles that are supporting the spine. Uh, this can be very difficult to treat or can be difficult to treat if people don't understand the mechanisms of what it is that's happened and all the compensations around it. So uh, I'll try to make this as simple and straightforward as possible. Uh, obviously the spine is very, very complex, uh, but I'll give you all the relevant details and try to leave out the more confusing bits. So if you stick with me for a few minutes, I'll take you on a little journey of what it is that happens and uh, different types of treatments and the way that I treat these things and have found to be very effective. So um, basically what ends up happening is when someone has a, a trauma, uh, what, what a trauma is, is, is some experience that has left a lasting mark on the body. Um, now, typically, if we're talking about whiplash or some other sort of spinal trauma, we're looking at something that's been a very, very high degree of force that goes into the spine. So in other words, if you're driving the car and you know, smashed into something and your car stopped very suddenly, You'd be going one certain speed and then you go from one speed to another speed very quickly. So the deceleration or the sort of negative acceleration of slowing down very, very rapidly um, puts a tremendous amount of stress on the joints in our spine. <clears throat> and uh, the reason this is a problem is because there's actually a physical limit to how much our the muscles that support our spine can hold. So normally when there's, if someone were to, uh, stop a car very quickly and your head gets thrown forward, your body would sense your head going forward and be able to respond by contracting the muscles on the back of your neck to support it so that it doesn't uh, come undone uh, or doesn't get overstretched. Um, so there's a certain range of function where that's exactly what happens. However, when you have a very, very high degree of acceleration or deceleration where you uh, go from very fast to very, to stop to very slow very quickly, um, that accelerated force creates a huge amount of load on those muscles. And that load is sensed by certain sensors in the muscle itself, at the ends of the muscle, called the Golgi tendon organ. There's no exam on this, so you don't have to remember. But the Golgi tendon organ is basically has a sensor that will, uh, under a very high degree of load, will release the tension of the muscle. So that's called resetting the gain of the muscle. Uh, and this is a, a natural protective mechanism, which is in pretty much every muscle and every, every skeletal muscle. And what it's there to do is to protect the muscle from being damaged itself. Because if the normal, the normal response of a muscle being stretched and then, be, and then the muscle contracting as a, as a reflex um, were to be in, in place at every speed, when we're dealing with these very high speed or high degrees of acceleration or deceleration, what ends up happening is we would actually tear the muscle if we tried to make it contract. So we have this protective mechanism in the muscle that helps it to switch off to protect the muscle. Uh, it will very often create a damage in the joint, um, but your joints can heal and it's sometimes better or however we were constructed, it was decided that <laughs> it was better to let that muscle go, take the, the stress on the joint structure, um, and then try to rehabilitate afterwards. So the only problem is, is that when this happens, we have this resetting of the gain of a muscle, which again is a very, very high velocity type of movement. Um, when that happens, that has very last, long lasting changes, more so in some muscles than others. So uh, there are lots of muscles around the joints we have very deep muscles, we call intrinsic muscles, um, and they stabilize the joint. So their function is that when the joint moves away from neutral, they contract and shorten to bring the joint back towards a neutral, where the extrinsic muscles, which are further away from them, when they contract, they will bring the joint away from neutral. So essentially the joints are kind of positioned in ways so that the intrinsic muscles bring it towards a stable position when they shorten, and the extrinsic muscles bring it away from a neutral or stable position when they contract. So it's important to understand that there's two different layers or main functional layers of muscles. There's lots of layers of muscles, but 
these two main functional layers um, and the intrinsics will stabilize, but they're also not under conscious control. So I can't make the multifidus in between L3 and L4, which is an intrinsic muscle, by the way, uh, I can't make that consciously contract. I can't just sort of think about it and switch it on. It doesn't work that way. It's a reflexive muscle that gets switched on by a part of my brain uh, whenever I decide I'm going to move in a way that needs that muscle to be switched on. So I hope that's not too confusing, but basically intrinsic muscles are turned on by our brain automatically to hold everything together so that when we do move, we're not gonna be pulling the spine apart. The extrinsic muscles have a very different function and they're designed to, under conscious control, to allow us to move, to contract muscles and turn our head and move in different positions. So they're contracting at the same time as the intrinsics, but the two of them are working in balance with one another to allow for motion, but also to guide that motion in a way that uh, is safe for the joint. So this now sets the, uh, the stage for explaining what it is that happens in a whiplash. So when we have a whiplash, what happens is, say for instance, you hit something, your head gets thrown forward, and the muscles that would normally be holding the joint together get stretched under a very high degree of force, and they reset to a longer length. So I have a little model here. This is just a little pool toy, but basically I have little sticks. This is a muscle on one side, this is a muscle on the other. If you had a trauma where your head went off to one side, it would stretch these muscles, and the muscles would be left at a longer length. So in other words, that protective mechanism I was explaining with a, the impact or the trauma throwing the, the joint in this direction, the head in this direction, would result in one muscle on one side in the direction of the where it would have been stretched during the trauma would be left longer, okay? So this uh, would show that basically that muscle is basically longer and it can't effectively contract as well because the muscle is left longer. And when your body is telling all these muscles in your spine to contract, it's giving the same signal to all of the muscles. So if this one isn't, um, isn't contracting as effectively, what's gonna end up happening is um, it's going to be uh, longer. So when you're going to be moving your head in a direction that needs this muscle to contract, to stabilize the joint, your body won't be able to stabilize the joint as effectively and the joint could move in a way it's not supposed to move. So what our body will do is it will recruit another muscle, one of the extrinsic muscles. So remember, intrinsic muscles, when they contract and shorten, bring it back towards a neutral position. The extrinsic muscles contract on joints as well, they connect on joints, but they connect in a different orientation, such that when they contract, they actually move the joint away from neutral. And so I'll use another rubber band to demonstrate this is an extrinsic muscle. So if this muscle is weak, your body could recruit another muscle to make this one contract to try to prevent it from going too far in that direction. So this is a typical mechanism that our body will do. So an example in the neck, which is very, very common, is that uh, you would have an injury, something like this, and then you know a day or two afterwards, your body realizes that your neck is unstable so it will start contracting the muscles, some of the muscles here in your neck or the trapezius, and they'll get very, very tight and you'll start to experience a bit of pain because for one, those muscles aren't designed to be contracting all the time. They're just designed to move you. And then when you move back, you know, they're not working anymore. So these muscles aren't designed to be contracting all the time, but if they're trying to stabilize, they will be. Then you get fatigue and, uh, you know, discomfort. The other thing is that when they're contracting all the time, what they're doing is actually putting quite a lot of load on the joint as well. So when the intrinsic muscles contract, they don't. You know, they're holding the joint, but they're also allowing some freedom of motion in the joint as well. So um, your body could deal with the intrinsics being of a certain tone all the time, but when your extrinsics are pulling on the joint for a long period of time, uh, that can create a lot of pain and discomfort. It's putting unnecessary sort of forces into the joint, and over time, uh, the combination of that muscle being tight and the joint moving in a weird way can start to create breakdown and arthrit arthritic changes in the joint structure itself because the joint isn't stabilized and it isn't allowed to move in, the de in a desired way. So um, now you probably know more about how joints work and the <laughs> effects of traumas to joints. Um, 
And I'll explain a little bit about what people typically do about this. Um, one of the things people will do is they'll, they'll think that the tension in their shoulder or their neck is actually the thing that's causing the problem. Yes, it's causing pain and discomfort, but it's not actually the source of the problem. Your body has put that tension there as, uh, as a tool to try to, to try to decrease the uh, chances of damaging the joint, uh, this unstable joint. So what happens is if we go for a massage, or we have some type of muscle therapy on these muscles, these compensating muscles, we can get them to relax for a little while, and you'll feel that your joint will move more freely, but um, your body will still recognize that there's an instability. So what happens? It comes back. So there are a lot of therapies that have this in common. They're working just on the com compensation muscles, and they're not actually doing anything to resolve the imbalance of these stabilizing muscles. So um, even um, there's some types of osteopathic and chiropractic treatments where they twist the joints. Um, sometimes this can uh, increase the end range of motion of a joint. In fact, it very often does increase the end range. So if they take your head all the way and turn it further, it'll make it easier for you to turn your head all the way that way. Um, but sometimes what they're doing is changing the tension of these extrinsic muscles. Okay, so again, like massage, it's not going to have a long lasting effect. Um, or if they are affecting the intrinsic muscles, if we're not doing it specifically to address the muscles that are too tight, um, then it's going to loosen too many muscles or loosen muscles in an in a orientation that isn't um, going to be uh, beneficial, maximally beneficial. So your body will eventually just sort of revert to where it was. Um, however, uh, there is a way and a way that I use uh, to resolve this issue. And that's just simply to recognize where the joint is. Um, so when we examine the joint, rather than trying to make it straight and try to feel where we feel resistance to the stretch this way and taking it away from a neutral position um, to adjust it or to try to stretch this, because a lot of people will take this joint and bend it all the way the other way to try to get a big stretch on this. Uh, but in effect, and usually what they'll do is also twist the joint at the same time and create a twisting motion. So when, as soon as you start twisting the joint, you're going to be affecting a lot of muscles around the joint as well. And then you start losing specificity. It's not quite as precise. Uh, however, the technique that I use or that I've created is called adjusting to neutral. And adjusting to neutral will basically just, in our assessment, figure out where the joint is. In other words, find where the joint easily moves into because of this tension, this imbalance of the tension. So we find the imbalance position of the joint, hold the joint in that position, and then take a contact that's going to stretch the joint uh, back towards a neutral position and put a high degree of uh, force into this muscle. So a very, very uh, fast, but very short motion. So in other words, we do a very, very fast stretch so that we can elicit that re reflexive resetting of the gain of this intrinsic muscle so we can actually get this muscle to loosen up, okay? And when it, this muscle loosens, it's gonna stop turning this other one off. So this one can actually start to contract and we can find balance and stability in the joint. So uh, it's a very different way of doing things. Um, probably not many other people doing it other than ones that I've taught, uh, but I am teaching people now uh, more and more how to do this type of a uh, modification to their adjusting techniques. Um, but what's really lovely and beautiful about this is it doesn't hurt because you're not putting the neck into an awkward position. You're not having to take the joint to the end range to try to fix this. What we can do is actually just put the joint the way that it's stuck, uh, which is, you know, a position like this or like that. And then we put our hands on and just straighten it up. Uh, if we do it in a very, very precise and fast uh, way, then we can actually reset that muscle and create a balance of these stabilizing muscles in the neck uh, and then joints and things will work well. <laughs> uh, so uh, thanks for watching. I hope that uh, answers some questions. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, drop them below. I'll be glad to address those. Thanks for watching.